How's everyone going? Welcome back to another Commission Aid MTMR Railways unboxing video. So, once again, we are opening up, uh, opening up something. Um, we're going to keep it. Um, technically, I could make it annoying and do the same as what we did last video, which was the Hello Kitty um, Series 500. But um, because I've got another one to have a look at, but we'll leave that to the next video. So, let's. And you already know by what it is by the title. Let's. I'm doing to this. All right, so yeah, we are having a look at Kato's SL um, Hiyotoshi um, uh, train pack. Technically, to be more accurate in the naming, uh, code number ten seventeen twenty seven. It's in this very nice black um, uh, casing, special print just for this model, and it's even got the um, thing on the on this side of the box. So. It's really, really nice little packaging. Um, you pay a bit extra for the special box as well instead of getting, say, your regular green boxes, which are like this. So, no, no, something, something different. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. I guess um, it's pretty much regular. There's a few scratches already because the boxes were sitting on top of each other. So kind of unfortunate for these little scratches, but oh well. At least the, the model is safe. So let's get that out of the sleeve. So. Well, what's it called? It comes with locomotive uh, 58654, which is a um, 5830 class um, uh, locomotive with a set, uh, with three ser 50 series car carriages, so especially um, uh, with signs and stuff saying SL uh, Hiyotoshi. Um, yeah, other than that, let's get into it. Um, it's a nice little pack actually. We have the instruction manuals. So, special print. Oh, well, not a special print. This is just a. This looks like just. Yeah. So, you get a nice info, a uh, special info booklet about the. Um, yeah, really nice. Uh, it talks about the stations you can get for it. The Girder Bridge, which is actually should be the same as what's in V2, I think. Possibly. Which, um. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. You can build so it's giving you a layout you can build for for that. Very very nice. Um, it's, you can use the sound box as well to get the sound, the correct sounds for this model, um, and just talking about the different components needed for that. So it's not too bad at all. And some real life photos. So I'm not sure if I have to blur those because that may have to, uh, these may have some copyright on them. Um, we'll see. <laughs> um, Really, really nice, um, and I, I'm not ironically at all. This is actually will be coming out as a, f a future video as well, or may have already came out. The V2 pack, so we could probably steal the um, bridge off that, possibly. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that's a really nice little info booklet. Um, so now we've got the regular uh, instructions, which you come, which are pretty bog standard with most um, Kato stuff. Uh, very nice photo on the uh, on the front. This is actually the model on the front of this one, which is not, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's uh, pack number 10, 7, uh, 17, uh, 30, uh, 27. You can actually buy them separately as well, just the engine and just the carriages. Again, you're getting the green box though, but... So, uh, let's get into it. Uh, talks about the configuration of the carriage. Um, you can use a D10 apparently on this as well. Um, so... Talks about a bit about DCCing, um, the attachments for the front because there is a headboard for this. Uh, attachments of de extra details and replacement to so that you can have a couple on the front instead of having that fake little thing. Um, although it does look pretty nice having that little thing, it's a lot more realistic than having the big thing on the front, anyways. And you can replace the couple at the end so that it's, uh, you can actually couple things up to the end of the train. Sounds like it you can't then. Oh, what, what this is telling me. It's also got the special couplers, uh, intermediate couplers, like what uh, we've seen on the Series 12 carriages. Actually, should have came out in the uh, unboxing extras. Uh, unboxing extras 2. And then you got your parts breakdown, uh, part, the spare parts you can purchase. Very, very nice. Very nice of them to do so. And we've got a nice bit of foam, just uh, not foam, uh, bubble wrap, just making sure that nothing scratches the top. All right, so let's get into, let's see what's in the um, detail pack. I actually can't see what I'm doing very easily. So that should be spare couplers. 
Actually, it's like long shank, so extra length couplers. Um, I'll probably get a, sh a lot uh, a close up if I remember to get them. And then you got your um headboards as well. I don't usually put the headbo uh, headboards in. So, and how nice they've also got the numbers already pre-fitted. So no need to get those fitted in either. Unlike me, who seems to delay it for so long. My C sixty two C doesn't have numbers on it, but the D fifty one does. If I can't, oh no, here we go. So this is oh sprue with N carriage detail. Oh. So that's for the, that's like an end frame thing. A nice little rail though as well. I already have one of, uh, one of these, so I got it from the train set, but it's nice to have another. So, there we go, it comes in the pack. So let's get um, into the locomotive first. Once again, it uses the same style box like um, this usually. So this is the D51's box. Um, it'll come in like a sort of tray, and it's just literally they put the tray inside the um, thing. So that's kind of nice. Right, let's get it. Let's get it out then. Uh, again, we will have our close-ups uh, after. So, this is your front coupler, so you can put in a front coupling onto it, as I said earlier, and your head, also another headboard for the front of the train, the engine. Sorry, flip this up and bring her out. There we go. Nice little. Um, 5830 class, like 5830, it's either 5830 or 5820, I still need to confirm that, that'll be part of the history section, I need to confirm that, but really, really nice looking little thing, so much little detail, so much little bronze painted stuff as well, really, really nice. Let's go and bring out these carriages, shall we? So, we've got the, your, your one, so you got two observation carriages, which are these two. Um, so they basically got windows up the end, which are really nice, and that's got a regular couple on this end. And you got the special couples on this side. Um, all electrified, so you can fit lights to this, if that's an option, if you would like to. I feel like that if you were going to put lights in these, you want like the um, yellow tone lights as well, uh, because obviously this is an older style train. You don't you don't really want a um, bright um, white lights, but. Uh, this is your second cage, which has a thing there. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, I'll have to go and I'll, I'll confirm all this. And I think it feels like you probably have like a cafe or something in there. At least that's what we would have. But uh, I'll confirm what that is. Um, yeah. So you got and you got your doors there. It's really really nice. It's got your sliding windows. Uh, well, obviously they're just, they're not real sliding windows on the model, but in real life they'll be sliding windows. And then your final car end carriage. So. Yeah, you know, other observation carriage. So I'm pretty. I'm not sure how many uh, they usually run with. I think they uh, looks like from all the images they run with only three. So this is your full length of the train. But um, yeah, so there we are. That's the uh, Kado um, SL Hiyotoshi um, train pack. We'll get. We'll quickly spin everything around and we will have a close look at everything. Right well, here we are. Everything is laid out, ready to go. We've got uh, the 8620 class sitting, um, in, uh, obviously closer to the camera, and then the three carriages in the in the rear. So we're going to do our standard sort of stuff. So let's firstly start off with doing a bit of brief history on the 8620 class uh, and the train itself, and of course um, its current status. The Class 8620 was a fleet of steam locomotives built for the Japanese government railways. 672 locomotives formed the class, constructed by various Japanese manufacturers, to form the first mass-produced passenger locomotives for Japan. The first of the fleet entered service in 1913, and the last in 1929. They were built with a 260 mogul wheel arrangement to operate on Japan's 3 foot 6 inch gauge railways. 42 more locomotives were manufactured and exported to Taiwan between 1919 and 1928, forming the CT 150 class. The class was retired by 1975, where 20 of the class made it into preservation. Locomotive 8564 is an operational representative of the class, owned by J.R. Kishu and originally built in 1922. Since 2019, she has been the leader of the SL Hitoyoshi service that travels between Kumamoto and Hitoyoshi every weekend during the warmer months. 
Jay Akusha announced that the service would end after the 2023-2024 running season in March 2024, due to the age of the locomotive and difficulty of acquiring spare parts. Outside of railways, the 8620 locomotive is commonly recognised as the Mugen train after the Demon Slayer movie presented an 8620 lookalike on screen. So for close ups we're going to split this up into two parts. We're going to do, firstly do the steam locomotive on, on its own and then we're going to do the carriages on their own. Uh, not each carriage, we'll do all the carriages in one go, uh, I mean, but we'll just separately do the locomotive. So let's uh, move some stuff around and let's get rid of this um, uh, the tablecloth so that we can have uh, see the nice mechanism and the wheels, the linkage of um, our locomotive. So yeah, my oh my, the, 80, uh, the 8620 class is small. I thought the others were small, but these are even smaller. Anyways, um, so there we are. We have a nice, a nice and in framed, uh, nicely framed in the center of the shot. You can see, hopefully, see most of the details. I definitely can't, not from here. So um, you got a better view than I do. In any case, let's do a quick spin around of the locomotive. Uh, we'll also zoom out a bit so it fits in the frame. So there we are. As I say, it looks really, really nice. We'll come onto its side first. So we can see the front pony truck. We've got two, deflect uh, two deflectors. Um, I forgot what they're actually called. Um, uh, what type of deflectors they are, but pretty standard style deflectors. Um, but mounting is pretty interesting on them. Uh, I think some of them did have the the barn, uh, the big uh, bigger deflectors, the barn door, st uh, barn door style, elephant style, as they also nicknamed them down here. Uh, but yeah, so you got your two steam domes on the top. You got your safeties and whistles right there. You got a uh, gener oh, uh, steam generator, I think they call it, a auxiliary generator. They basically operate the lights and stuff and then in front of the whistle. And the funnel's also pretty nice. It's, it's got a little copper cap and it's got like this weird little extension thing on the top. The wheels are painted out in, uh, the rods are marked in red. Uh, it uses Woolshart's motion. I'm pretty sure it's Woolshart's. Actually, that may not be Woolshart's motion. I forgot what that's. Uh, it's a rather. But yeah. There's your no number plate on the side of the engine. All the very nice little mine, uh, fine pipe work all the way down the locomotive. This is a. Being a this model is rather expensive, so. Uh, comparatively to the other stuff. Let's spin around to Very nice number plate. Etched number plate fitted. Um. You got some in cab detail, it's molded detail, but it's it's there. Uh your three truck um tender. So it's a fixed wheel tender compared to the other ones which had a um bogey tender. Got a ladder on the back. Your number plate again. I'm not sure that I'm not sure if that headlight works, we will find out. Usually they haven't worked, I've noticed. You got your big oversized coupler. Uh, I would change these out one day, maybe. To some, uh, some like Kate, uh, the knuckle style, just to be a bit nicer. But um, yeah. So moving along. Once again, you got the front of the locomotive. Pretty nice on this side as well. You got a ladder down the side. Uh, all the pipe work, painted metal bands going down the at uh, the, uh, the boiler. Really pops a. Uh, a little bit, and as well as that, you got the painted um door um what's it called uh whatever it's called the thing that allows you to open the door. Not sure about the line that goes in the other direction because I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be there, or possibly it is. The shape of it's supposed to go straight down. I can bring up the photo to have a quick look to make sure that is correct. That is correct. It is. Oh, that's like the second arm. So you got two arms usually on the, on it. Some of them have only have one. Uh, not this. Some locomotives only have one in real life. So yeah, just, just need to confirm that. Yeah, not too bad. And then your headboard will also sit there. You got the fake coupler currently fitted to the front for this one though. Um, I'm not probably won't change it out. It looks fine. I wouldn't usually push anything with most of my trains. So there we are. And looks really really nice again. Very nicely high detail model. Um, I think it's a new molding as well, possibly. 
Anyway, so let's go and uh, quickly jump over to the three carriages. Uh, as I said, we'll have a look at all three of them in one go. Just before we do switch over to the other, to the carriages, I thought it might be a nice idea to have a look underneath the engine. So we can see that's the underside of the engine. There are traction ties fitted to the rear driving wheels. Uh, the connection to the t uh, to the tender is permanent, and it is electrically connected. So there are pickups in the tender. Looking on top of the model, however, um, we can see that the chimney actually has a spark arrestor fitted. Um, what they basically do is they stop, uh, to stop large particles and sparks from flying out the funnel, uh, especially when the locomotive is steaming hard. So, yeah, so that's what the extension is. And then again, you can see, you can even see now that there's a blue window there, I didn't realise. There's a few things on the roof uh, that uh, hatch does not open. You got uh, semi-decent fake coal. So yeah, not too bad at all. Let's jump over to the carriages. All right, there we are. We've got the three carriages all lined up. So, all looking really nice. This is your first carriage that goes behind the locomotive in terms of the orientation in the box. Um, observation carriage, really, really nice. Um, got a window on the end. You can basically, you can see all around. The, uh, especially when it's at the end of the train, really nice seeing the train, uh, like the dist uh, the view just whizzing past and going away. Really nice, uh, it's especially, uh, yeah, we've got a few of those style carriages down here as well, Parlor, as we know as parlor cars. We've got the second carriage, I, again I think it may be a cafe carriage, possibly, because of the, um, uh, because of what's up the other end. And then you've got your other observation carriage, which is, um, observation, other, um, uh, parlor carriage. So, yeah, so in detail wise, I'm um, pretty general. There's a corridor, the corridors don't, don't work like the um, Shinkansen ones do. They do stay pretty far apart when coupled up. You've got your nice little slimline couplers though on the, um, inter for intermediate and you've got the big couplers to couple up to the back of the tenders. You've got the SL um, Hiyotoshi um, tags on the side. And even written out with the locomotive numbers on the side of the carriages as well, where you can see pinned out over there. Very, very nice little details. It's very small, fine little details. Um, so yes, this is a Kishu uh, ran uh, service as well. So now I've got a JR East train, I've got a JR West, and I've got a Kishu. Yeah, I don't know what I've done. Mind you, the um, C62 is actually a Takedo one as well, so technically it's just JR Central. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I need to sort of solve that problem eventually. Uh, I'm looking for a D uh, another D51. Uh, very nice paint painting, is, uh, etching, not etching, so like work, uh, colours on the side. You've got the badging on the, so uh, on the side of that second carriage, as I say. Nice big badging saying SL1 um, Yotoshi. You can see you've got also a bit of undercarriage detail on this uh, as well. Really nice uh, models. Um, no windows in the ca uh, on that carriage right there, which is kind of interesting. Because there is definitely a window on the next carriage for the uh, in between the corridor. So that's very, very interesting. So you can see there's a whole lot of like boxes and stuff underneath the, um, uh, the carriages. So... All of your electrical boxes and stuff like that, generators, really, really cool. Um, the windows are designed in real life would be slidable windows, I would assume, being two uh, pair windows like that. Yeah, very, very nice little carriages. Yeah, it's just a center carriage, which for some reason has no windows uh, in the um, gangways. Well, yeah, there you go. Not bad looking carriages, very high quality again, very fitting of the locomotive. Um, so let's go and jump on the layout and let's go and give them a run, shall we? Well, of course, I'm um, running the locomotive first, so. Alright, here we are at the layout. So, lights behind me, so that's always going to be a fun little problem. Uh, forgot to turn on the other light, but we might turn it on for the later runs. Um, what we're going to do, because we've got the steam engine just here, um, we're going to rail on the carriages as well and we'll park them up in the second track just over here. Um, so we'll rail them onto the main line that we'll just push it there uh, using the other uh, rail that we got from the, the uh, train set. So 
Let's get these on. Nice and easy. Any three carriages. Coupling shouldn't be too hard either. The slope is heading uh, is sort of in the center, so it should be fine. I think it's just a bit of force that should push the couplers in. Not sure. Not sure how these couplers actually work. There you go. Yeah, just a little bit of force. Make sure they align correctly. Um, not, don't push too hard, of course. You will break them. They are only plastic. But just a little bit of force and should do it. There we go. Uh, we can also do a quick test as the carriages have any lights. Yes, they do. So they've got some internal wall lights, uh, which we'll have a closer look at them later. But you've also got the tail lights, as you can see. So one no four light. Nice. They've got some lights, not um not all lights, but some lights. So I'll just roll just let them roll through. And we'll push them uh, another rope because I thought I'd put them into the back track. I'm pretty sure it's not sloped in the center, so it should be able to sit. I hope. There you go. Awesome. Right, let's get our locomotive on. And as usual, we'll give it 30 minutes in each direction. And then um, we'll get some running shots of it as well during those 30 minutes. So we'll first rock it a bit. So let's rock the engine. Yep, front headlight. Pretty quick little startup as well. Maybe it was just because of its first run. Definitely smoother now. So. Front headlight, no rear headlight. So just the front headlight in, only when travelling in the forward direction. Very nice. Alright, let's get it going. So for running in, we usually put the, ca put the uh, motor at about 50% power. We run in 30 minutes in each direction to get the gears and the oil to pu push through. Let's, uh, let's see a run around. We'll get a few shots of this and then we'll get her off so that we don't take too long with it. All right, well, here we are, all done with the running in. Definitely a lot smoother than it was at the beginning, so. Oh, how well these models can creep as well. Anyway, so I guess we'll just bring her out and get a couple up to the carriages. Alright, with the train all set up, ready to go, let's 
let her head off. Uh, we'll run on the outside track for the other runs, but just departing from the in, uh, from the inside run. Uh, the loop. So take it away. All oh, right. Well, there we go. What a nice little model it is, isn't it? Um, I feel like I've been spending this whole video pronouncing the um, name wrong. Uh, so, uh, because it is um, Hideyoshi, um, but whatever. Um, apologies for that. In any case, um, yeah, not a bad addition to the fleet. Definitely a small locomotive, but at least it's a complete set. No need for extra carriages. Um, definitely will be nice to go and create this sort of scene later on. Uh, I'll give it a go, creating that sort of scene. Um, but yeah, what can I say? It's a very nice mechanism as usual. The carriages have a few extra little light things, which I was rather surprised about. I didn't even know about that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, very very nice little addition to the fleet. Uh, once again, we'll have our initial thoughts at the end. Not sure if this one will get a review ever completed, so this may be it for it. Um, well, we'll see. We'll definitely see it in some running sessions in the future. Very nice model in any case. Well, thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed joining me for this uh, unboxing of the. SL Hideyoshi featuring a JNR class 86 20 and 3 50 series carriages.
Until next time, we'll catch you all down the line.